Hello and welcome, Chef Pennington here. Today is Puffy Slow Braised Pork Carnita Day. Who doesn't love tacos and who doesn't love meat that's been braised for a long time to become super soft, juicy, and delicious? That's exactly what we're doing today. And we're going to use some cool taco shells that are not fried, which is usually how a puffy taco goes, which is totally cool, healthier. Go ahead and subscribe while you guys are here. And we'd love to have you guys around for all of our future videos. Let's get started here. So carnitas, classically a carnita is going to be the pork braised in lard, which is totally awesome. Extra moistness, totally delicious. Lard's fairly inexpensive. Today we're going to do it a little differently. We're going to do closer to a classic braise, which is a little healthier for us. And we're going to put all kinds of big flavor in here. So a braise starts off by searing our meat on all sides. Do you take your time on this. Um, brown food tastes good. So that's one of the reasons but mainly it helps keep the juices on the inside. So a Spanish maraquois is onion. Everybody loves onion, brings a lot of flavor to the table. The cut does not matter. This is gonna go in our braising liquid and once we shred our pork, some of this onion is gonna end up in your taco, if you like. And so it's nice to cut it in different sizes, just so everything's not uniform. In this case, we don't want uniform. We love textures. So we've got our onion there. We're going to take some carrot, which is adding a little bit of sweetness. Pork is already innately a little bit sweet. So this is just going to reinforce that variable and bring out its natural sweetness, which is totally awesome. So we're using two carrots here. And then what makes it a Spanish maraquois is the pepper. We're going to use a poblano. Poblanos are delicious. They're not really hot. Watch for the stem. A straight stem is going to be less hot. A curved stem, hot. Totally cool little tip there. Nice long slips and ribbons there on the poblano. Now we're going to sear off our Spanish maraquois. This takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it. Once again, brown food tastes good. It's going to bring out the natural sugars in the vegetables. So totally don't try not to speed that up too much. So let's start building this. Let's get our pork back into the pot. And here comes our magic ingredient, Coca-Cola. Believe it or not, it's very classic for South American carnitas to have some Coca-Cola in there. The sugars and all the other magic ingredients they have in Coca-Cola just offers, it tenderizes the meat as it cooks, which is cool. So a little serrano, you could use a habanero, you could use a, a regular um, jalapeno. It's up to you what you guys like as far as your heat. Fire roasted tomatoes, don't have to be fire roasted. I personally am a fan of fire roasted. I think it adds more flavor, but the tomatoes are gonna add a little acidity and once again, a little more sugar from the natural sugars inside of the tomatoes. It's gonna help tenderize the meat while it cooks all this time. So we got some water in here. Here's another flavor bomb weapon, chipotle. I personally love chipotle, which is a jalapeno that has been smoked, which means it's a jalapeno that's not as hot as the original jalapeno. So homemade fajita seasoning is going in there. You could always buy it at the store. I'll have the recipe on the website that'll have all those ingredients measured out for you. Boom, we're gonna put the lid on it. We're gonna forget about it for a lot of hours till it's done and you guys like it. So braising is fried or seared food and then it's in a closed steaming water environment. Let's make some pico, this is gonna be our garnish. So here's a cool way to cut a tomato. Cutting tomatoes can be really annoying, especially when you want the cut to have some kind of uniformity. So we're cutting through the tomato here with a very sharp knife, but notice that I'm not cutting all the way through it. It's getting close to the board and then it's stopping, which is cool. We're getting long, nice cuts. And then we're gonna turn it 90 degrees and we're gonna slowly cut through it. This is where the sharp knife's real important. A dull knife or a serrated knife could work, but a dull knife will not work. It just will not go through it. It's just one of the things about a tomato. So we've got all these nice little uniform cuts and we're gonna turn on its side and we're gonna cut it up and we're gonna have fairly uniform pieces. If you really want them uniform, you'd have to cut the tomato and then eh, we'll get to that another time. <laughs> so the onion, we don't want to cube it out. We wanna have a nice texture here because this is a garnish. So we did a julienne cut there and which is long strip cuts and then we took a knife through it in two different directions a little bit of cilantro a little freshness there very classic in a pico and one of the things that's nice about a pico is you don't have to cut it up any particular way 
There's no rules. You guys can do whatever you want. But classically, it's tomato and onion and then cilantro and a little lime and whatever you like. I'm using some serrano here. I'm a fan of serrano. They're hotter than jalapenos, but they have a much more fruity flavor to them. And if you remove that seed and rib there, they're not as hot. So I love them. You should try them out. They're actually pretty inexpensive too. So we want to do a pretty fine cut there. Nobody wants a big, huge piece of serrano. And then we'll get that into the bowl. All right, delicious lime. The lime will soften the heat from the serrano or the jalapeno, which is kind of a cool thing about the acid there. It will tone down the heat. It's kind of like pickling in a, in a way. That little bit of vinegar bite will cut through heat and also fattiness. Some more of our fajita seasoning, which is not really classic in a pico, but I like it. I think it just makes the pico have more flavor and depth, depth of flavor, really. We do want to let this set up a little bit. You certainly don't have to, but the flavors just get happy together. So I like to stick in the refrigerator for a little bit. We got one more condiment we're gonna make here. We're gonna pickle some red onion. And we have something fatty, which is the pork. And whenever we have fatty foods, one of the things that's really nice is to add some acidity to it and cuts through it and it balances the whole flavor out. Something to think about. So pickling a little bit of red onion here does that just perfectly if you don't like it you know just don't do it but we want long thin cuts here because it's going to be a condiment we did a julienne cut there into our bowl we're going to break everything up and then we're going to do a really simple pickling liquid here we're going to get some apple cider vinegar and do about four tablespoons this is going to be the base because apple cider vinegar is not as vinegary as Red wine vinegar, much stronger flavor, so we're gonna use a little less of that. And we're almost done. We're only gonna add one more ingredient here. A little bit of sugar, one teaspoon of sugar. That just helps balance everything out. That's what we're always doing when we're cooking. Same thing in the refrigerator, let everybody get happy with the pickling process to actually do some pickling. Let's check back on the pork real quick. Let's see how this went. Looks good. Ooh, look at that, it just falls right apart. You gotta love that, guys. Can't beat it. This was six hours on a really low temperature. Doesn't take six hours, I just want six hours. Let's look at the puffy taco. In the grocery store nowadays, they sell these. They're par-baked tortillas. So they're kind of like, they're pliable. They feel like dough, and they cook really quick. This is actually real time. Now, I had it on the heat for about, it was about 20, 10 seconds, 15 seconds before it. The video started here so they cook really really quick and it's cool they puff up and we didn't have to fry them which is even better because the traditional puffy taco was usually fried with fresh masa you know the whole nine yards so let's plate it up 101 ways to plate everything but there's one cool thing i did here i thought you guys might like to see nothing fancy though but just as far as plating it up making it easy for you to serve everybody unless everyone's making their own tacos which is always cool the whole buffet thing so we got our shredded pork meat on there we're gonna add some of our pico. And here's the thing, using wooden skewers. And by those at the grocery store too, it just helps the taco look like a taco instead of laying flat on the plate. Usually two does the job there. Pretty cool, you know, a lot of us like to plate our food nicely. So we got that, and then here we go. Just that little bit of pickled red onion really makes the bite just, it makes everything pop, it's awesome. Come join us on social media, love to have you guys over there. Go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Everything about the website, printable recipe card. You guys have the best. Take care.